Welcome back to Paramedic Project. Dr. Fran Williamson, emergency physician, joining us one more time. Final episode to talk about some of the controversies uh, in the traumatic arrest patient. Mm. So uh, today's episode, this big question everybody's got, compressions or, or not? Yeah, so that's, that's a big question. I mean, it's a question I get often on road, um, especially when I suppose the, the expectations from an employer changes um, towards, the, towards the paramedic cohort around how we're actually going to manage these patients. It's the expectation now that, that, uh, that the paramedics, at least where I work, um, are going to are going to do some advanced skills on the traumatic arrest patient and try and reverse the revert the uh, potentially reversible causes of the the traumatic cardiac arrest. Yeah. So um, people are confused out there, compressions or not? Yeah. Um, so I think it is controversial and I think it's difficult and it's certainly been ingrained to us for a long time now that what we need to do in someone who's arrested is do CPR. Sure. If you look at the medical cohort, the ARC guidelines are very clear on this. You know they've just changed. Uh, basically all the focus is on compressions and it's been taken away from the airway management because we know in you know modelling studies that this is where we can make the biggest difference. Sure. I think the reason this is different, as we spoke about in the last episode in traumatic cardiac arrest, is because the pathophysiology is different. Yep. In general, and I'm making a generalisation here, these patients have otherwise normal hearts. It's not like they've just had a big STEMI and they've got a you know, dysfunctioning heart. Yes. But what the problem is, is they can't get the blood around the body. And that's either because they don't have any blood to push around the body or because they've got an obstructive cause like a tension pneumothorax preventing that outflow of blood. Okay. All right. So still have to treat every case on its merits, I suppose. Yeah. And in a couple of episodes ago, we were talking about primary medical causes and getting some demographic information back about the patient. But in the patients that are 100% traumatic arrest, as you said, usually high functioning heart underlying uh, underlying these big traumatic injuries. So they don't need help with their pump. They need help with, uh, with either lack of volume to pump or a big circulatory obstruction. Definitely. Yep. And so I think um, whilst it's very hard to stop people doing CPR, because we're so used to doing it now for medical arrests, mm. what we need to actually think about is what can we do to help this patient? And what we can do is focus on those other life-saving tasks. So as we spoke about before, attending to providing oxygenation, decompressing the chest so that an obstructive cause isn't a problem, and then providing volume both by splinting and reducing volume loss and by giving external volume through an IV or an IO. Yep. I think the problem about CPR is it takes multiple team members away from actual time critical tasks. And so whilst you might find on scene that it's very hard to stop doing CPR on these patients, uh, you need to think about what your resources are and whether or not you can afford to give up an entire team member to the detriment of those other life-saving skills. Yeah, and I suppose that's a really interesting point too to make because I suppose around here in a metropolitan area where we're working, we often get a lot of team members coming to these scenes. And so potentially, um, e even on those scenes, it's very difficult to give up a team member because there's so much that needs yep. getting done right now for this patient. Yep. And if you're working in a, in a country area uh, where it might just be you and one other person or you and some some fire yes, department standards. officers or yep. bystanders actually work on this patient, then you definitely don't have that set of hands exactly. to give up. And, um, and you sort of talked before about um, moving away from that linear approach to management of these cardiac arrest patients, especially with these traumatic yeah, yeah. arrest patients. Certainly, so. and I think that's vitally important. You know, we don't do things in a stepwise manner for these patients. We do them all concurrently. Sure. So you need someone attending to the airway, decompressing the chest, putting on your binders and splints, getting an IV line in or IO, giving a volume bolus, and then reassessing. And that yep. entire process should take under 10 minutes. Yeah, so it's all happening for the patient all at once here. While at the same time addressing some big basics we talked about last episode, that's been Paramedic Project. Dr. Fran Williamson, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks no for your time. And uh, find us on social media. We'll see you next time.